All right, everybody, good afternoon. I think it's time we make another Mariners video. It's been a while since the last one because it's the off season. We had to watch a division rival win the World Series and everybody's upset. The ownership and the front office has shown repeatedly this off season that they, they don't seem to really get it. So it's bad times for Mariners fans and things aren't really getting better. Uh, the Mariners made a trade a couple weeks ago and they made a trade last night, and both trades are basically the same thing. The Mariners give away a player of value to save money. That's both of these trades. The Mariners give away a quality piece to save money. Now, I will take a minute here to talk about how I feel right now about the Mariners, because... I do have opinions on these moves. I do feel a certain way about these decisions being made. But I want to be very clear about something before I get to that part of it. I am not going to get too emotionally involved in developing my take on the 2024 Mariners until after we see what the 2024 Mariners are going to be. Um, these trades... They can't be the end of the line. Like, if these trades are the end of the line, then I I mean no hyperbole when I say that every single Mariners home game for this entire season should not have a single fan in that stadium. Like, I'm serious. If you go to Mariners games this year, if they're just done making their moves and you're just cool with the team shaving payroll after two straight super profitable years, then... You're a glutton for punishment. Like, I don't know why you would do that to yourself. Why would you give money for that? So, I'm sure the team is not done yet, right? Like, there have to be more moves coming. You're dumping payroll so you can reapply that payroll elsewhere. So, I'm sure something is going to happen. I don't think it's going to be Otani, of course, but it could it be somebody like a Yamamoto. That seems a little more realistic. That seems possible. So... We need to see where this goes, because if you get somebody like a Yamamoto, then you can flip somebody like a Bryce Miller to get a really good bat. You could end up with a really well-put-together team by stacking your pitching staff to the degree that you can trade some of your valuable pieces like a Bryce Miller and build a good lineup that way without having to overpay free agents, because... Free agent bats don't really like to come to Seattle because it's harder to hit in Seattle. So, I can see where this stuff works. That being said, uh, the Suarez trade, I'm totally cool with. Suarez, to me, showed the, the, the decline last year. He went from a well above average, good quality power hitter to a barely above average hitter with limited power. His main asset was that he was good in the field, and at his age, that's probably going to slip soon. And also at his age, his other abilities are also probably about to slip. He's playing in a stadium that isn't really that well cultivated for his uh, skill set with a bat in his hands. I mean, he's a kind of, kind of a power hitter. Power hitters in um, Seattle don't tend to do all that well because of the stadium and because of the marine layer. So, I have no problem with the Suarez trade. Of course, I would have liked to have gotten something. But if we can flip the money, we were going to pay Suarez into something younger, with more upside, maybe even straight up better than Suarez. I have no problem with that. So, I'm not going to say it was a good trade because we didn't get anything back. It was a salary dump. But I have no problem with it because, to me, Suarez was one of the guys who... We needed to get off of sooner rather than later. This trade last night, on the other hand, is a little bit tougher for me. So the Mariners traded mainly Jared Kelnick to the Atlanta Braves. They also threw in Marco Gonzalez and Evan White for a couple of pitchers that are probably never going to be anything and won't do anything to help us this year. So... We basically gave away Jared Kelnick so we could not pay Marco and Evan White. So, on the surface, it's another pure salary dump, right? We are giving up a high upside outfielder in Jared Kelnick 
to get out from paying Marco and Evan White. Now, I love getting rid of Marco. We don't need him at all anymore. And I also, at this point, have to be okay giving up on Evan White because he's just never going to be healthy. But to give up Kelnick and get back nothing in return is tough to swallow. I don't like that. I don't appreciate that. And I this one hits a little bit closer to home because Kelnick was a guy who I generally believed in. I don't think he's got superstar potential, but I do think he has very, very good MLB player potential. He's, on the whole, last year, an above-average bat. I know it was very inconsistent, and he had big slumps, but overall, had a decent bat. He's good in the field. He's great on the base paths. So to me, I look at him and go, that's a guy who, at the very least, should be a capable MLB player. Maybe he could even be more than that. And beyond that, we had already addressed a big part of the strikeout problem when we let Teoscar go and when we traded Suarez. That's another reason why I was cool with the Suarez trade, personally, because we need to cut down on strikeouts. The strikeouts need to stop, and moving off of Teoscar and trading Suarez does that in spades. Those guys strike out too much. But... Doing it to Kelnick, like if you're saying, okay, we're going to continue to dump the big strikeout guys because that's the direction we're trying to go, like you don't need to push it that far. Like Kelnick actually brings other things to the table. He's good in the field, like I said. I think he's our best base runner. He's not necessarily the fastest, but he's very good on the base paths. I'm continually impressed there. So even if he doesn't become a great hitter and just becomes a decent hitter, you're still getting plus attributes in these other areas. So this one, yeah, I feel this one. But my original statement stands. We need to see what this team is going to do with this money before I pass judgment. I need to see what we're planning here. Last year, the Mariners' payroll was $140 million, And the team has said we're going to spend more money this year. So how much more? We don't know, but I've heard rumors that it's going to be about 170. That's going to be our payroll. If we go from where we are right now, which is like 110 to 170, and we do it via actually getting really valuable players, not just like 20 Tommy Lastellas, then that's a team that should be a threat. That's a team that should be really good in 2024. That's a team that, if they wisely spend their money, should be a significant improvement over last year's team. So, I need to see what they do. If they end up spending all their money on a bunch of third-tier, fourth-tier, fifth-tier guys, utility players that cost a few million bucks each, then, of course, I'm going to be furious. You can forget about me spending any money on this team for a long time. And if they don't do anything, then I might have to burn some stuff. But I'm going to let this play out, even though this one hurt me a little bit. Like, this one, Kelnick was somebody who I had been following for years. I was very invested in his growth. I was very invested in him becoming a good player. I saw the seeds of it last year. There was some really promising stuff. And now he's just gone, and it's over. Also, by the way, just as a footnote... The Robinson Cano trade was now bad, like objectively. Like the the Robinson Cano trade that everyone was so excited about a couple years ago, down the toilet. But we got to see. All right. See you guys later. Go Mariners. Let's see what happens next.